Welcome back to Talking Guitar, a special live edition here with Frank Sly of Sylvan Guitars. Thank hey. you so much for being here, Frank. Hey, I'm uh, really excited to be here. Awesome. Well, this is a special treat for us because you, I mean, you live fairly close by. You're in Georgia, so right. not too far away. So you're able to come up and bring some guitars to show off, do some demos, and Zane took some great photos. And now we just get to talk all about you and your experience and your guitars. So great. Awesome. Well, the first question always is how did you get into Luthery? Right, so I uh, graduated from the University of Georgia with a psychology degree, um, and you know, if you, as I was about to graduate, I realized I had no career plan, um, and with a psychology degree, you're kind of <laughs> limited to graduate school, yeah. and I didn't want to do that. Um, so I had been playing guitar for a couple of years, and I wanted to find someone who could do some work on a guitar that I had, and I actually. Um, did some research and found Scott Baxendale, who was in Athens at the time, who had uh, an apprentice program, and I kind of just, that sounds great, jumped right on it. Um, and so I went in and skipped my morning class the next morning and went in and walked through the shop, and he said, yeah, we'd love to have you. And I said, great, graduate you know, in December. I'll be here after that. So that was um, that. Was that. Yeah. Awesome. So you've only been playing guitar for a couple of years. Though. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I started on piano and then got um, kind of worn out on it, so I, I, mm -hmm. I jumped on guitar and I really really took to it so i was playing all the time and all that and so i really um i was really enjoying it so this was kind of like i wanted to know more about what went into it because before then you know obviously i knew about different woods and that kind of thing but i had never really thought about the construction aspect of it before mm -hmm. my apprenticeship so i you know read some books and um at the time tried to like discern what those samaji books were about which was <laughs> way above my pay grade at the time but um that was kind of the that was my like introduction to it. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, what kind of music do you are you into? Um, I, I all kinds. Um, I like uh, I like things that can be pared down to a single instrument and then mm -hmm. brought back up again. So, um, you know, I'm I guess you know if you had to pin it, it would be like folk Americana. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I like all kinds of things. I like to. Um, listen to like jam band music and stuff a lot, especially when I'm working, because it really can kind of just filters out, you know, mm -hmm. filters other things out and it really kind of helps me focus. So cool. Yeah, that's yeah, already answered one of my later questions, but I feel like that kind of explains your your like very diverse spread of guitars. So sure. you would be somebody who has like a very eclectic uh, background and interest set. Um, Cool. Well, I, yeah, I knew about Scott Baxendale's program, and I know now he's over in uh, he's in Santa Fe, I think. That's right. Yeah, with mm -hmm. Stagold. So, yeah, what was that like? How how long was that program? So it was a year, um, and then I stayed on afterwards for about six months. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was I started doing his. So one of the things that he's really famous for is his um, his harmony restoration process. So yeah. that was kind of like how I started. Um, so I, I started doing that and, and started doing some repair work, but really wanted to focus on custom building. So that was where I spent a lot of my time and I would watch him, you know, do the more intricate parts of his guitars as he was building. So that was a really informative part for me. I really enjoyed it. You know, it was, a, I think at the time there were four people in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, he had two kind of employees, me, the student and him, and his wife would work the, work the front. So that was, it was kind of small and intimate, but there were places I could go to get advice and look at what other people were doing and mm -hmm. have them help me and stuff and he had such a um, great um, network of people in mm -hmm. town so I got to you know tech for some different people which was really fun and you know meet some really great artists that was really um, exciting you know yeah that's yeah. awesome Cool. So, so yeah. So after you finished that, did you basically go straight into doing repair and building for yourself? So yeah, I took a couple of months off after that, and I was kind of trying to figure out how I was gonna um, do my own thing after. And I had a friend. Um, well, you know, it's it a very southern thing. You know, like um, you know, our relatives. Like my mama talked to his sister, and they were saying, <laughs> "Oh, my son builds guitars. Oh, my brother builds guitars." And so. We kind of got connected. We're both from the same hometown, and uh, which is Columbus, Georgia, and it's right on the border with Alabama. And the border is the Chattahoochee River. Okay. So he had an idea. Um, Columbus was a was a mill town, and there was a big dam downtown, and they had just pulled that dam out, and there was all this wood that they left on the side of the river, and said anybody that wants this can get it. Um, and he had this idea to build guitars out of it. Mm -hmm. So he called me as a professional at the time and uh, I said that sounded great so we jumped in it together um, 
that was really how we got started. Those are called dam casters. Cool. And uh, <laughs> the, the wood that they pulled out was heart pine that was cut down and put in the dam in 1856. And those trees wow. were born in the 1400s. So it had a, like a really, they're so heavy, but they uh -huh. look really beautiful. They're really, uh, um, they're really cool guitars. And that was really nice for me as a start because, you know, as a luthier, just like a, like a regular luthier, it's really hard to get your name out there mm -hmm. without, and that really helped because it, it told a story that people were really interested in. So yeah. it helped us get a, a much larger spread. Mm -hmm. So we did that, I did that um, with him for maybe a year and change. And then I moved to Columbus and I uh, kind of started on my own and took over everything. And I've been doing that for like seven years now. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a great, yeah, like I've talked to a bunch of folks about sort of the struggles of being a new luthier and how you get yourself out there and yeah, yeah having some sort of kind of like local, you know, like almost like local interest piece to sort of sure. tie yourself to like that, that sure. also conveniently works great for building guitars. Right, right. You're like, awesome, this is great. Yeah, and people really wanted to tell that story. So mm -hmm. we got really lucky to be in some really cool, you know, interviews really yeah. early on, you know, the newspaper in my town did an article that it was a, like a fantastic marketing. Mm -hmm. You would think the newspaper would not do as well as it did, but that we, um, we actually got, did a little like 60 second bid on CNN, which was really cool. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So that really helped as well. That was, uh, I spent like, like six hours on the phone after that aired, you know, just talking <laughs> to people who were calling and interested. So um, that was, a, it really helped yeah. to get started to have that. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So then after that, you went ahead and started your own shop and that's, yeah, that's you've right. been there ever, in the same, same place. Yeah. So I moved, um, I moved down to Columbus and kind of had a shop in the, like a little building outside of my house and that uh, that didn't go great because I learned as a as a you know person in my mid twenties that I couldn't be so close to all of my distractions and be productive. So <laughs> I moved the shop closer to town. It's kind of in downtown Columbus now, mm -hmm. and that really helps me be productive. And I've been in that much larger space for um, almost six years now. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So. Before we dive into what makes your guitar special and, and everything about all these guitars, um, just sticking with your space for a second, because you also, like a couple of other luthiers that I've, I've spoken to recently, you have a house concert, or not house concert, but like space concert sure, series, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. concert series in your space, which like to, like after talking to Kevin Miderman about this, I'm like, that's a brilliant idea sure. for a luthier, because right. people come through, you're like, hey, play my guitar. Yeah, what do you right. think about exactly, this? Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, how long have you been doing that? So, well, uh, it's been three years. Um, we started, our first show was February of 2020. So we did two shows and then, <laughs> and then didn't do any more uh, for a while. And we did what, two, maybe two shows in, um, in uh, 2021, you know, in that like weird period where we, mm -hmm. everything was gonna be fine for a couple of months and then mm -hmm. it went back down again. Um, and so we did, I think, two or three shows then. And then since last year, um, I did, I think, I think like nine shows last year. So cool. I've done maybe 12 or 15. And the, the, so the inspiration was, I was talking to a friend of mine and she and I were talking about the space and how great it looked. And, you know, we were both uh, big fans of the Tiny Desk concert. And mm -hmm. so it was, it was her idea to have, you know, to kind of do a local Tiny Desk concert and really showcase the original music that people were playing that we didn't we don't really have a great venue for in Columbus mm -hmm. so that was the inspiration for it and it's been really great to have the community respond to it and the musicians really like it so like a tiny desk concert we record video and audio for all for each show and it's uh, it's been great to have people come in and play my guitars in front of people and have you know 50 people come into the shop once a month and look through everything so yeah, yeah that's really awesome that's that's such a yeah such a great way to engage with your community and build up those relationships with other artists and musicians and everything so yeah that's awesome um and speaking again of your of your space and sort of like that that aspect of it you have great musicians who come in to play your guitars like your videos all look amazing so Thank yeah or is it a lot of folks that you kind of just met in the community like that yeah and it's really you know the nice thing about my hometown is it's very collaborative. All of the musicians there, because the scene is is not great there, um, mm -hmm. the, all of the musicians really want it to be better. Mm -hmm. So we all, I think, I'm glad that they're there and they're glad that I'm there. So we, we, we kind of work collaboratively to do a lot of that stuff. And um, you know, it's nice to be able to call somebody and be like, hey, you want to come play this video? And then, you know, like uh, whatever, four months ago when I, two months ago, I don't know, when I started posting the 
videos on the Carter Vintage site. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't tell them before, and then I like sent them the link, and I was like, hey, look, you're on the Carter Vintage site. <laughs> they all freaked out. So that was really fun to have, um, you know, to kind of elevate that. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, let's talk about guitars. All right. Um, so yeah, so I guess we'll just, well, maybe we'll talk about the electrics first. Since okay. That's a little bit less my wheelhouse, but you can kind of like sure. go into your, your details too, about all helps. these. <laughs> But yeah, so we were already admiring this this green one because it's got what, what was the stone saying? Or malachite, malachite yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. got malachite inlays, which is beautiful. Yeah. Goes beautifully with that sort of forest green color. And this is this is just a standard um, standard tuning, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Standard telly. Um, it's got some like uh, strat contouring. You know, so I used um, uh, I, I got as creative as possible, and and so the this model is named the teleporter. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that one is just pr pretty standard otherwise, um, but with the humbucker in the neck. I am an acoustic player. That was really where I started, so I'm, I'm not too good at playing electric, and I really like that setup because it's very simple and can do a lot. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's. I feel like, yeah, I'm not an electric player at all. Whenever I think about getting one, I want a telly, so yeah. something yep. like that would yep. be my, my alley, too. All right, let's talk about the baritone sure. now. So. This is the butterscotch, right? That's right. Yeah. And this, uh, the model, the body style is uh, based off of a Dan Electro. Mm -hmm. um, and then oh. I took, yes, yeah, she's, she's a big girl. So, yeah. Yeah. 30.2 uh, 30 is the scale length. And so it's, it's really long because I, I learned uh, from playing other people's baritones that having the long scale really helps with the resonance. It makes yeah. a huge difference. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel unwieldy. It's just like you're like, whoa, that's yeah, yeah. kind of far out there. When you uh, when you stretch good. those like those like three three fret four fret chords, you really you really mm. feel it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I, I kind of cool. I looked at at um, I noticed a trend of uh, a lot of baritones, people playing baritones, and actually I had a friend that sent me um, some uh, you know a guy that was doing a you know like baritone specific sessions, and uh, so I. I thought about it and I had played one of those Dan Electro baritones in the past. So I, mm -hmm. and those were, you know, they're literally like two pieces of, um, two pieces of plied wood that are stuck together with other pieces of wood in there with mm -hmm. rubber around the edge. I mean, they're, but the middle position between those two pickups is some sort of magical door to Narnia that sounds so good. So I wanted to <laughs> recreate that with this. And so this is kind of the, the, the most souped up version of that guitar you could get. So it has the master nice. trim on it and all that. And it, I think it, I really like a baritone because if you have more than, if you have two guitars and no bass player, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Yeah. If you have three guitars, in my opinion, three guitars is too many guitars <laughs> for one for one band. So having that having a baritone in there really fills that lower register. Yeah. Really helps out a lot. So I, I I hope that it's it's my attempt to be um, hip and trendy, and I hope that you know people take on to it because I think it's a really great instrument for yeah. a lot of things. The demos sound awesome. Yeah, and yeah, they're just it does it adds so much color and gives you so much to work with. So I, yeah, I think that's a good call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, acoustics next. Yes. So let's see. So. We, uh, let's talk about the mango first, okay. because, and this kind of ties into something that Marie mentioned last year about um, your, your tone wood, sort of your sources, because you've right. got family ties up north, right? And that's, that's how right. you get some of your wood? Yeah, so my mm -hmm. family owns forestry land in Maine. Mm -hmm. So I get to go up there, um, you know, every once in a while, sometimes, hopefully once a year, but not always once a year, and, and go and pick out um, from our mill, like all of the pieces that I want, and they ship them down to me, and it's really great. So mm -hmm. that, having that experience really made me wood conscious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, and, you know, from an early age, it, I really liked wood, so I liked to, um, I'm a, you know, it, it increased my wood nerdiness. Mm -hmm. And so I try to find as close to the source, you know, for my tone woods as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and so the mango, I actually, that set of mango is a really gorgeous set that I actually got from one of my wood suppliers, and he sent it to me as because he said that he, um, they were talking about selling some to Martin because mahogany was getting so expensive and they thought this would be a good crossover wood that would, that would kind of meet that, that demand. Um, so he sent it to me and said, you know, try it and see what you think. And I was thrilled with it. Mm -hmm. It was a very experimental guitar. So it's an OM size, um, it's a cedar top. Um, and I, I thought it sounded great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the neck is mango too, right? The mango neck is yeah. The, so the neck is heartwood and and maple. Oh, okay. Um, so that's the kind of the difference in the color. Yeah, it definitely has that nice warm mahogany sound. Yeah, beautiful. 
And so I, I love the, the D-shaped neck on this one. Um, right. we, were, we were talking about that a little bit briefly, and it's like it's kind of like you. I don't expect it because you're used to like V's and right. C's and stuff like that. But like, yeah, I really, if you're used to a flatter neck shape, this is such a great um, sort of version of that. But that neck, that kind of like that ridge is, it really helps you orient in a nice way. Yeah, it, and it, it can be really uncomfortable for some things and some people really like it. And you know, I, I had someone that uh, was kind of a crossover classical player mm -hmm. who said that they really liked D-necks. And since this yeah. was an experimental guitar anyway, mm -hmm. I decided to go for the D-neck so that way I could have something in my shop because in, part of my process is I like to bring people into the shop and they can play my guitars and they bring their guitars and we can say, okay, I like the neck on this guitar, the mm -hmm. body on this guitar, and we can kind of build the perfect hybrid guitar for them of all the things that they really like from other things. Mm -hmm. And since a lot of people had never played a D-neck, that was my you yeah. know, option to be like, hey, here it is in the shop. If you like a D-neck, here it is. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because yeah, it's something, yeah, you don't see a lot, but I could see a lot of players really liking that. Yeah. So having that option is great. Take a look at this double O. So this is all mahogany. That's right, all mahogany. So. Um, the top, sides, mm -hmm. back, and neck, and uh, are all from the same tree actually, which is pretty cool. But cool. Um, it's a double O size. Hard. It's a little bit thinner um, than yeah. a standard body. Yeah, um, really slim. Yep, yeah, which was a, another uh, you know experimental. I tried actually. Uh, so one of my, you know, I have a lot of builder inspirations. I, I follow a lot of other builders on Instagram and stuff like that, and. Um, um, I saw a Dion guitar that mm -hmm. was two-toned. It was, I think it was just like maybe ebony and mahogany or mahogany and maple or something, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So I started to make this guitar as with that inspiration, then realizing how incredibly difficult it is to make all of that look so perfect, and <laughs> it, it got a little screwed up in a couple of places. So I had, um, I did the all of the bursting to kind of to make, not, not cover any mistakes, obviously, because I never do that. But uh, Don't so, worry, Jeff, too, it said the same thing. Yeah, so it, it, it really helped. Uh, it helped cover those mistakes, And uh, but I thought it turned out really cool. It's a very, uh, I think, vintage-looking instrument, and I think yeah. it, it's, it's one of my favorites because I personally love an all-mahogany guitar. I think it's got a great tone to it, um, mm -hmm. so I really like that one a lot. Yeah, and it's it's got some different touches. You got the herringbone on the mahogany, which yeah. is not something you'd usually get, but yeah, yeah it's in the, yeah that kind of vintagey sunburst. <laughs> It doesn't feel like you're really right. losing anything. It's just right. it's just really comfortable to play. Yeah, and I think, you know, so I, I hesitate to say this because I might piss some people off, but I don't personally love dreadnought guitars because <laughs> I think they're too uncomfortable to play. They sound great. I think a but lot of people feel that way. After I'm bent over one for a long time, I just like my shoulder hurts. So, yeah. you know, I just so I like my missionary goal as a guitar builder is to build big booming small body guitar so that mm -hmm. you can get that kind of tone from a smaller body so this was kind of an attempt to do that um, to build the like most voluminous kind of um, tone forward comfort guitar that I could so, yeah, yeah for sure yeah I mean I think because dreadnoughts are like they're a standing guitar and if you're not standing while playing right I mean, you want something kind of small so right, right. the more volume you can get out of a small guitar the better 
Before we move on to the other side for the guitars, let's talk a bit more about your influences and sure. sort of what you draw on, who your inspirations are. Um, well, I have to say, like most of my influences are visual. Um, you know, this is I have a kind of alternate version of my own, you know, of the of Baxendale's bracing that I changed a little bit, that I change, you know, with every little build a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but you know, the hardest thing I think about custom guitars is that you know the the difference you really have to have a very expensive microphone and you have to really get the sound quality to be able to hear but then even then you have to not listen to it on your phone right yeah. which is always <laughs> difficult so it's it's hard to you know take sonic inspiration but there's so many great guitars that I have been able to play you know when I was at um, Teenag before and here at Carter Vintage and other you know some other stores I've been to that have been really great to be able to finally get my hands on some but so visually um, there's so many people that I, you know, I have a, a very extensive like screenshot saved list on my phone of people that I, but you know, I think um, a lot of the stuff that's really fine detail, you know, the, I mentioned the Dion guitars mm -hmm. and um, I think the Tom Sands guitars and the Tyler Robbins guitars that are, uh, have all that like s subtle CNC work and stuff in yeah. it. And I love that stuff. I haven't done any of it myself, but I really respect it. Um, I think the, you know, I, I think there's a, I, I love the, that Dion guitar, right? That's two-toned. It's so mm -hmm. simple. It's like the perfect kind of simple guitar. Yeah, he's the master of making s the simple look exquisite. That is so hard to do. And <laughs> that's what you don't get is like, that's so hard to do. <laughs> yeah. But then you, on the other side of it, like you look at Ryan guitars and they have just Pearl out the wazoo. Yeah, like crazy. And I, some of those are beautiful too. I really, I can kind of appreciate both sides of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, this, the kind of quality of Santa Cruz and Bourgeois, like their ability to build mm -hmm. such high-end guitars consistently. I really, really respect that too. So all, all of those people and, and many more who I, you know, probably have forgotten about. And, yeah. <laughs> we can put the, the list in the show notes. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's everybody who Frank wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, well, so let's talk a bit more about Ooh, like... Wide Sky guitars. Oh, okay. I played one of those recently. It was amazing. Sorry, that was... I haven't even gotten to play one of those. Awesome. Is, they're like, um, they're, they're hollow bodies, um, and um, Gary Clark Jr. plays one, and that was how I heard about them, and then I got to play one at a traveling show, um, and man, it was, it was... I did not expect it to be the one that, like, I really? gravitated toward. It was really cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right, sorry. Cool. <laughs> Well, let's talk, let's go inside your guitars a little bit. So you okay. mentioned uh, Scott's uh, bracing that you can yep. still use. Um, what, yeah, what do, you do, what do you do for bracing? Is it just, just wood bracing? Any composites, anything like that? Um, no, I would like to do some composites. Um, I think the, uh, the carbon fiber um, bridge plate idea is, uh, that really appeals to me. I have to figure out how to work carbon fiber because I've heard some horror stories about it because um, it gets in your skin and it's terrible. But mm. uh, So yeah, it's all wood internally. Um, it's basically... A, a kind of modified Martin X bracing. There's nothing like you would look at, if you look at my Instagram and you see, or whatever, and you see the photos inside, you're not gonna go, oh, what's that's different. It looks very normal in there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I kind of, I try to alter something each time. You know, it's a, um, I do, um, I like to treat my bracing uh, very um, pseudo-scientifically. I, I treat it more like alchemy than, um, you know, then like real science, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who do, um, I mean, I do, I do like, um, tension testing and stuff like that, but there's a lot of people who, you know, do all the sonic, yeah. um, quality testing and they'll tap tone it and record everything and watch the levels and all that. And I, um, I, I don't do that. I probably should, but, uh, I like to just kind of, as I'm carving the braces and as I'm thinning the top down, I'll, I'll kind of tap on it and like, let, wait till I hear the right kind of ring. Um, and then, you know, stop go to something else and um, so yeah there's nothing there's nothing like uh, groundbreaking or anything in there it's just kind of um, my own take on a, a lot of different things one of the things that I think is um, um, that I've, I've heard other people mention that I really try to focus on is, is releasing more of the soundboard mm -hmm. um, and I have been able to build a couple of classical guitars and that was very eye-opening um, because really? it's a it's a you're you're totally focusing on the tonality of the instrument and not really the structure so much mm -hmm. where you know obviously with a steel string guitar you got to focus on a lot of structure inside yeah, that's true. Um, and so that really helped me um, you know talking to a classical builder you know he gave me some advice that I tried to take in you know and um, so that that I thought I thought that was really helpful as a steel string builder to kind of take it from that approach it helped yeah. me kind of change and alter some things okay interesting yeah. 
Um, so yeah, how do, when you're in that process of, yeah, I guess sort of constructing the top, like how long does that generally take in terms of like doing the bracing, carving out everything? Like, Oh, like, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> is uh, everyone kind of different? Just depends on yeah, like the Yeah, I mean, I, it, it also depends on, you know, how busy I am with other things because, right. you know, sometimes I'm doing batches, sometimes I'm doing one at a time, sometimes I'm, you know, flooded with repairs and so I do, you know, like the X bracing and then the next day I do the side braces and right. then, um, but I would, I would think, you know, it's, um, I mean, it's got to be at least, you know, a day, half a day, something okay. like that, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, because it, it goes very quickly and then kind of slowly and then quickly mm -hmm. again and, you know. Cool. And are, are you a hide glue person or? Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yellow glue person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yellow glue. And uh, so all, all my all my joints, my wood joints are all yellow glue. And then uh, um, all of my not wood to wood joints, you know, the pearl, the uh, the frets and all of that are all uh, super glue. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else about the construction of your guitars that you do that is maybe a little bit unexpected at all? Hmm. Um, I wouldn't call it unexpected, but I, I have uh, been adding sound ports to all the guitars that I build. Mm -hmm. I think it makes such a huge difference in the um, for the player specifically. So that's kind of that is a, a, a relatively a newer technique for people, but it's becoming more and more popular, and mm -hmm. I really like it. And it's standard on uh, my guitars now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's that's real crazy in there. I have done some guitars that are uh, laminate bracing. Mm -hmm. So the X braces and the tone bars are um, have that strip of, usually it's rosewood in the middle. Um, I, I like to think you can thin the top down um, some more. And uh, so you can, it kind of really changes the way that the whole guitar interacts. Um, mm -hmm. So I've done that, you know, that's really the only other thing that I've done that's um, super crazy. Okay. Um, I, I do have the, I'm, I'm about to start, I'm, I'm kind of, still trying to learn a lot as I go um, and I'm about to start trying to do that um, the, uh, the fancy three bolt system you know the the alternate tailor system for the um, for the neck joints because right now I started as doing a uh, dovetail joints and now I do mortise and tenon bolt-on joints uh, with a glued fingerboard and I'd like to get um, I'd like to have the whole thing, you know, removable and put back on them yeah um, and there's some custom builders that I respect that are doing that um, and I really I really want to learn how to do that because it looks like it's really secure for the whole guitar's longevity mm -hmm. um, so that maybe in 40 years you don't need that Martin neck reset you know um, so I hope to start doing that soon I'm kind of still in the research and development portion of that but, yeah. yeah awesome yeah um, well, let's talk a bit more about your body size sure. speaking of Martin um, I, I feel like you know for anybody who is familiar with Martin you're gonna see like OMs double O's yep. parlors but you did mention um, with Just your high. OM yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's not quite an OM no no it's an OM with a little bit of a larger lower end on it um, and the waist is a little bit more rounded um, it's kind of a it's actually a slightly altered version of a very early harmony guitar okay. um, that I, I um, stole and then <laughs> altered a little um, you know, I went to the NAM show one year when I was still really early as a builder and I, and I, there was this, and I, I can't remember who it was, but there was this builder that I saw that had a, um, his bridge was different, asymmetrical. And I asked him, you know, why he did that. And he said, stylistically, and then he expounded that guitar players are very traditional and they like to see things that they like they like the guitars that they see to match what they see in their head mm -hmm. in the as the image of a guitar and what he told me was when you're building a guitar you can change one thing <laughs> from a traditional guitar and if you change two things it's going to skeeve a lot of people out and they're not going <laughs> to want it so you can change that one thing um, so i like to keep my body styles all um, very traditional you know the, the the martin the gibson shapes that you're used to because i think that you know, when I when I tell people it's a double O shape, they know exactly what yeah. it is. Um, and I so I think that that um, is really helpful there. So that most of them are pretty normal. I like this shape a lot because, again, I you know I I don't want to build um, you know big jumbo guitars or big dreadnought guitars. I think you can get everything you get from those guitars from a smaller body. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of my I call it little jumbo. Mm -hmm. So it would be like jumbo, small jumbo, little jumbo. Um, <laughs> and so this is kind of my just sl slightly larger than an OM um, shape that I think is really popular. Um, it's been popular with my customers. They tend to, I tend to build that one a lot uh, mm -hmm. more. And I think it's just really comfortable. Yeah. 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 Awesome. 
So last we've got the parlor, which might be my personal favorite because I like a little guitar too. Right. Um, and just not to be like a little side advertisement for the tuners, but I really like the tuners. Yeah, the tuners are really cool. Song. And the yeah. uh, um, the double O has the same tuners. They're mm -hmm. ratio tuners from Graptech, which is uh, I, I have um, started using and I like to use if I can. Um, they're cool because each as you each whole step on each string is is one whole turn on the tuner. So each tuner is geared separately mm -hmm. for the strings. So it, it, if you're doing a lot of quick tuning changes or you're really persnickety about your tuning, like the low end is just as easy to tune as the high strings. So it mm -hmm. makes makes things really nice. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so easy to quickly if you're a drop D person or you, you like to go back and forth a lot, that's such a nice touch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this one is, we've got Koa and Redwood, right? Right. So mm -hmm. I actually, um, so when I came uh, to North American Guitar in April mm -hmm. of last year and kind of got my, I, kind of, I wanted to, you know, to the, the experts in the field <laughs> to, uh, to kind of tell me where my stuff's at and all that. And um, you guys were very complimentary and gave me some good tips. And so I took those home and, and I built I built this guitar. Um, and I, I, I jokingly... It's kind of a, I made a little internal pun because other than the ebony, it's all North American wood. Mm -hmm. So it's my North American guitar, guitar. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, it's, a, it's redwood, koa back and sides, and the neck is maple from my family's land in Maine, and actually uh, black walnut from my family's farm in Georgia. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's so funny that that's the one that would be my favorite yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, but, and the inlay on it is beautiful too. Yeah, so. Is that a particular sort of uh, theme with that one or were you just kind of following your heart's desires? So I, the, two of the first guitars that I built had this same kind of bordered um, thing on them and I did those in Pearl and uh, it was, they looked really good. They were very ornate, but boy, mm -hmm. it was a nightmare to do. <laughs> um, and uh, so this is, uh, this is actually CNC cut by uh, my friends Aaron Ben Y at Ben Y Inlay, and um, it was very similar to one that he had posted on a ukulele, and I, I you know, I loved it, so I, I stole it. Cool. Um, yeah. So I, it's a, it was my also my first uh, twelve fret neck uh, guitar, which I thought was a you know, I wanted to um, really focus the tone. You know, I think a twelve fret guitar really helps focus the tone mm -hmm. um, in the center of the lower bout. So I was really trying to get that boomy tone out of the parlor. Yeah, yeah. it's got yeah, it's like very gutsy for a small body guitar. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just yeah. nice. Yeah.
And I've noticed it. It seems like you have pickups in all the guitars, right? I do. I Which do, ones yeah. do you like to use? Um, I use LR Bags Lyric pickups. Awesome. Um, they're I just I I think um, I think they're the best. Yeah. You know, it's as a microphonic pickup, it's it gives your guitar the most natural tone of any pickup that I've found on the market. Um, they don't work great if you're playing in a full band. You know, with monitors, the, yeah. you know, the drums coming through the monitors, they don't work great, but. You cannot beat them in a, like a singer-songwriter environment. That's yeah, that's what I've heard. I've always been a K and K person, but I feel like LR bags are sort of the ones that if you yeah, if you're if you're fortunate to get to play in relatively quiet situations most of the time, that's the way to go. If uh, people don't like the um, the LR bags, if they don't want the lyric and they don't want the sound hole pickup, I put the K and K in there because I really like those too. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Yeah. Um, well, speaking again of tone woods, um, it, so for the most part, yeah, it's mostly North American tone woods. Do you, do you have a, any? Thoughts or controversial opinions about things like using Brazilian rosewood or anything like that? Right. So um, I think Brazilian rosewood is beautiful mm -hmm. and I love the way that it looks, um, but tonally, I don't necessarily think it is, um, you know, the ultimate supreme tone wood. Um, I think you can get, like, I've built a, a lot of guitar, no, a lot, a lot for me, of uh, a, a large portion of my guitars have been built with Coca Bolo, mm -hmm. which I really like. I think yeah. it gives you that tone without paying five times the price for it. Um, so, uh, other than that, you know, I um, the, the guitars that I have built that I liked the tone of the absolute most um, have been um, Redwood. I'm really liking this is my trendy acoustic thing. I'm really liking <laughs> Redwood as a, as a top. That's what everybody's using now. Um, I really like it as a top, and then I've used uh, my family's maple, bird's eye maple back and sides on a couple of them, and that um, combination I think is really good. That's an interesting combination. You get yeah. the brightness from the maple, um, mm -hmm. and you get that kind of quick decay, but that redwood is really sonorous, and mm -hmm. you get that kind of darkness of tone of it. Um, and uh, you know, it, of course, it sold immediately. But my favorite, <laughs> my favorite guitar that I uh, tonally, my favorite guitar that I built was a double O with. Um, with um, and I'm, Interesting. yeah, redwood and maple, and I'm actually building uh, two more of those right now that are kind of a matching set. One is redwood; they're both redwood top. One is curly maple back and sides, and one is bird's eye maple back and sides. And one's a little jumbo, and one's a double O. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So is that what you would build for yourself? Um, it is what I built for myself. <laughs> um, and yeah, then it got so, sold. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a uh, I have a really bad habit of. Um, building a guitar for myself and then having someone talk me out of it um, and selling it to them. And I, <clears throat> my, my second guitar that I ever built, I built for myself. And um, I had a friend that was in an Irish uh, folk band and they were playing, I think like eight shows over the week of St. Patrick's Day. So I was like, hey, take this guitar and like play it out. It'll, it was one of my first, uh, you know, still really new and he played it and then didn't give it back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he he uh, he flattered the the bejesus out of me, and I eventually agreed to sell it to him. Um, That's the secret. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he he and I, you know, um, you know, I've never forgiven him. We're still friends, but I'll never <laughs> forgive him for that. Um, and then I had another one that I built uh, that was actually, uh, you know, I still do the um, I call it the Renaissance process, the Baxendale, you know, restoration thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a, a Kalamazoo um, that I rebuilt. It was a 1951. Um, LG1 Kalamazoo or LGO Kalamazoo that I, I like I saw it in the store and like my eyes fell on it it was like true love um, and uh, I got talked out of that one too um, <laughs> it's actually the the bands that played my wedding um, the the lead guitarist or the the front man had played it uh, and he really liked it and so when I went you know after the wedding I was like hey so what's the he played it for the wedding and I said so I'm like hey what's the uh, so you know, like, what's going to be the damage for the for the you know thing? And he said, "Well, <laughs> it's going to be that Kalamazoo." And I said, "Damn it!" Uh, so I knew that he, you know, he, he had me there. So after that happened, I had no guitar for myself. So uh, my wife actually commissioned a guitar, um, and Aww. she said, "You get to do whatever you want. Like, this will be your guitar. It's our wedding guitar." Um, she helped me do some of the bracing, you know, glued some braces in and did some sanding and stuff like that. So that was really fun. But that one is a parlor model. It is uh, uh, Sinker Redwood, and it's actually Sinker Roasted Redwood, which is wild, <laughs> and, uh, and, and Curly Maple back and sides. I went up to our family land in Maine and picked out, I walked into the warehouse and I said, all right, show me the best board you got. Um, and so they, they sh showed me this beautiful Curly Maple board and I took that and it's got a roasted maple neck and it has 
um, pretty elaborate inlays. It was kind of my. I think you brought that last year. Didn't I did. You? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, it was my it was my way of kind of, you know, I, I really kind of went all out on it. It was my nice. way to you know really showcase what I could do. And we actually um, we inlaid our cameos into the headstock, and that was my way of making sure that nobody ever bought it because you nobody's going to buy a guitar with that. my face on it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that that's the guitar that I have for myself. It's got a, it's got a sound port um, in the shape of a Mariner's compass, and um, it's 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 decked out. Yeah, I, I really like that one. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's I guess that's what you got to do. Like tip for all the other luthiers, because I feel like everybody says that is yeah. If you want to make sure nobody can buy a guitar off of you, just make it too personal. Yeah, put your face on it. Nobody <laughs> will do put it. Put your face <laughs> on it. Awesome. Well, great user-generated question I saw on YouTube was to ask folks, so, I mean, you can build yourself any guitar you want, which is right. a great skill, obviously, but if you were to go out and buy a guitar from someone else, what would your dream guitar be? Ooh, okay, so uh, if it was an electric, it would be, uh, um, it would probably be one of those Gibson um, 355s, um, or 339, 339, the smaller body one and the okay. walnut, ooh, love those. My dream acoustic, um, you know, any of the builders that I mentioned before, like I really respect those guitars and I really, I really enjoy the craftsmanship of them. Um, so I, you know, having any of those would be, would be great to have. Um, you guys, if it was one guitar I had to pick, you guys had that um, Santa Cruz that was the, the cowrie back and sides and the, mm -hmm. and the um, ancient Sitka top, the, you know, both of those wood combos. I love that Sitka, I wish I could build a guitar with it, and I'd be probably too nervous. But uh, and uh, the Cowrie, I think I loved that guitar, and that sound was really, really sweet. Um, I watched that video a bunch. I really yeah. liked that one. Yeah, some, yeah. Sometimes those really like just. I mean, Santa Cruz always knocks it out of the park, but yeah, those were yeah. really special. Guitars. Their attention to detail and everything is just so minute. Um, mm -hmm. So I really, I really like those. But I, I, you know, that's the only one like only like exact guitar that I could say. Ooh, that exactly one. that one, yeah. Um, but any of these, you know, there's so many great builders around that, you know, if I, I mean, I think personally, like as a as a small business owner, as a person who's, you know, is out there trying to, you know, push through every time, if I won the lottery, I'd buy one from everybody yeah. just to be supportive. <laughs> uh, but it would really be great to have, you know, some of those, and it would be a, an inspiration to, you know, to be able to hang those. Yeah you know, near me as I'm building so that I could, you know, go back to it and take the inspiration directly from the instrument. Yeah. And also peek inside. And what an amazing, like, setup that would be if you just had a room full of beautiful guitars and you're just working on your own guitars. Like, yeah. Let's, let's look at this one today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so send those lottery numbers in because yeah. that would be great. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's the kind of, you know, if you walk in that office in there where all those custom guitars are. Yeah. Um, just those, combine you got that those, with the shop. those two Spohn guitars in there. Those mm -hmm. are, you know. Yeah. I really like those. Those uh, 90 degree rosettes, those are super cool. I really, yeah. I, I, I can't do that. I really, <laughs> I really um, admire that kind of craftsmanship. But yeah. yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Max is really great. Inspirations outside of guitar making or, or music. Like, do you bring anything else into into your building? Sure. Um, I think uh, I really will. I love to go to like furniture exhibits and museums, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, so sometimes I'll go in there and, you know, take pictures of inlays and I really just like to, you know, look at the woods and see how the joinery is done. I really, I think that is, a, is very cool. Um, I w so uh, I have the, um, the Weta Workshop design books from the Lord of the Rings movies. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I need a, a curve, when I like am trying to inlay something or, and I'm just like, I need the, I need the right curve. I'll go to the elvish portions of those books and I'll look in there cause I love those movies and I lived in New Zealand for a while. So I have kind of that attachment to it. Um, so I will go in there and take my French curves to the curves of the designs that they made for those things and find the right curve and put it in. And I've actually done that several times with, um, cause you know, all of that is very, it's all, you know, wavy, curvy filigree and stuff like that. So I, cool. I, I steal from there. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the only thing that's in my shop that I'll whip out and, you know, look through and use. But yeah, I mean, I, I think um, any kind of visual art is really um, like as, as much inlay work and the fine detail stuff that it takes to do a guitar. I can't paint to save my life. Uh, so I really, um, I appreciate those kind of visual arts because it's something that I can't do at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I use them to uh, inspire me artistically, but not necessarily like visually. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't take things from that, but it's just like, it's great to see, you know, 
true works of art and then internalize that and go, oh, God, I'll never be able to do that, but I should, you know, Let's attempt. see what I can do. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, so what are your goals for 2023? What have you got going on this year? Oh, um, I would uh, love to sell some. I, w <clears throat> I would love to sell some guitars at the Carter Vintage <laughs> Exchange. And uh, I would like to, um, you know, I just want to sell more acoustics. If I got busy enough to with building customs that I didn't have to do uh, repairs anymore, mm -hmm. that would be aces. <laughs> um, but you're still doing a lot of repair. I am I'm doing a lot of repair. I don't, um, I, I don't call myself a repair technician. Mm -hmm. um, I call myself a luthier who does repairs because it, there's a lot of things like, you know, if you fracture your headstock, I'm not going to help you. Um, but, you know, if you need setup work or loose braces or any of that stuff that's that's well already within my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. I do all that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, I think just, you know, building more customs is really, that's really, I would love to do that. I really enjoy the concert series that I have in my shop. Mm -hmm. um, so having more of those and having them continue to be successful and maybe expand, um, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I would like to go back to, a, um, we were talking a little bit before about going to, you know, the showcases and stuff. I would like to, uh, you know, to go just as a, not as a, not as a builder, but as a, an attendee. Well, you talked a little bit about like having guitars around to sort of give people an idea of different options, like right. neck, neck side or neck uh, shape and everything. So when somebody does come to you with a request for a totally custom made guitar, what, what all are you open to, to doing for them? Like, do you sort of try to stick within your, your framework of, of models and then things that you do, or are you willing to kind of go off brand a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I'll go off brand if it's something that I can like then continually reuse, you know, mm -hmm. if somebody wants something that's totally, you know, different then I'm like, I'm never going to build that guitar again, then I, you know, would try to talk them out of it. Um, <laughs> So the thing I tell the customers is that having a custom guitar built, I have this, this is my kind of my spiel. So as um, you know, like your excitement when you buy a guitar regularly mm -hmm. is you go in, you see the guitar, you play the guitar, you love the guitar, you take it home, right? Like that's the, you've got, you know, you get, maybe you have to think about it for a little while, but even so you've got a, a very limited amount of time to really get excited about it. But mm -hmm. when you have a custom guitar built, um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the customer and I are having a baby together. Like it's going to change as we build it together. Like we're going to sit together and kind of figure out the right thing and it will, we'll build it and I can, you know, take fun photos of it and send it to them. And so they get excited about it. They're telling their friends about it. And then when it comes in person, you know, it's just, it's that much more exciting. Mm -hmm. So I like to build people their guitar, right? Yeah. Not a guitar, you know, I, as much as I love, like, building spec models and stuff like this, I think it's, I, the custom builder really shines when they're able to work with the customer. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, like these guitars are guitars that I think are the best, but they're not unique to a specific person. Mm -hmm. So if it's a local person or a regional person, you know, I'll have them come in before, as I'm gluing up the box, <clears throat> so they can sign the inside. And I had someone recently come in and, um, you know, like write their wedding vows inside the guitar. Um, like I will write things, you know, if it's, if it's someone, you know, that lives in Canada or something, then they'll ask, I'll ask them what they want me to write inside of it, whether it's a, you know, song lyrics or movie quotes or book quotes or Bible verses or whatever it is. Um, um, they'll, I, you know, I'll do that for them. And so that way it's just another, it's something that they'll never see, but it's their own you know, it makes it their own. Yeah. It makes it like the, you know, the heirloom guitar for them. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy doing that kind of thing. So I've had customers uh, come to me and say, um, I don't know, man, build what you want. And that is both good and bad um, <laughs> because it's, it's good because I get to, you know, kind of do what I want um, and, and really kind of build what I think will be a great guitar. But a lot of times it help, it's helpful to have input because I don't yeah. want to, you know, because... I built one guitar that kind of built with the idea that ooh, like a, this kind of sunburst would be really good on it. And then I asked them and they said, oh, I don't really like a sunburst. And I was You're like, like ooh, but, uh, but it would look so good, you know? So <laughs> uh, having that, you know, is, is sometimes bad, sometimes good. I, I, I like to have input from the customer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've only had a couple where there was a lot of input. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, and that, that is helpful. And, you know, it helps me branch out a little bit and do things that are a little bit different. Um, I'm building one right now that 
the customer was extremely specific on and he wanted all of these things from these different guitars and exactly like this and that and that. Um, and it, some of it is a little bit um, hard for me to do because I look at that guitar that they wanted it just like and I'm like, yeah, but it's not going to be just like that. Yeah. Um, but it's also nice because I don't have to make decisions myself. Um, <laughs> but I think it works best when we're able to make decisions together, the customer and I. Yeah. Um, yeah, when they defer to you a little bit and right. as far as like what you think is the best option, but you still have a little bit of constraint from them, which like they say, there's some freedom and constraint. So, right, right. Yeah. And they, they can come in and say like, hey, I, I really love that, uh, um, you know, that OM shape or that double O shape, but I really like the neck on this particular guitar. Mm -hmm. And so I can take those measurements and make that exact neck. And so when they're playing a gig, they can go from one neck to the other neck and it, the guitar feels the same and yeah. they don't have to rethink their left hand fingering and all that stuff works out. Um, so I think that really helps and, and other personalizations I get to do, whether it's inlay work or, um, you know, just the, the aesthetics. Like I try to tell people like pick a color mm -hmm. and we'll make that color the theme of your guitar. Like this guitar's theme is, you know, this like the green and the maple, mm -hmm. right? And this one's like more of a redder tone around the body. You know, there's just like, I like to do things like that. Obviously the green here. Yeah. Um, I like to do things like that that kind of add so it because and no offense to the guitars in the room but what I, I don't what, what I want is for if my guitar hangs on a wall with other guitars I want you to go ooh, what's that one mm -hmm. right and kind of step aside from it and, and pull it out and I, so I want it to be visually different mm -hmm. from regular guitars um, you know I don't, I don't really know what that means because it, it's different for other people. Sometimes it's that exact Martin that they have in mind. Sometimes it's that. But I just want something to be a little bit. Um, just a little something to grab on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whether that's the wood grain or the aesthetic choices. And that, I think, is where it's it, the customer generally has um, helps a lot. Because yeah. they have a great idea for something like that. They really want blue. Um, I'm, I'm building one right now that's um, it's in the finished process. And it's. Uh, Coca Bolo back in sides, but the customer really wanted blue. Interesting. And I was like, ooh, n n oh, <laughs> you know, because it's uh, everything's red toned. You yeah. know, it's all like earth ground, you know, brown tones and stuff. And then having the blue in there, but we were able to, um, you know, to find some some blue pearl and like use some blue purfling and stuff that I thought really um, the the binding around the fingerboard is blue, mm -hmm. um, or is uh, there's purfling lines around that are blue that it, like really like brought everything together and that guitar is going to be stunning when it's done um, and I never would have done that yeah so I think that part of it is is really good you know the um, I'm building a, a a larger body guitar right now for that same customer for a different customer but for um, you know and, and that's a new um, you know I grumbled about it nobody has ordered a dreadnought yet um, <laughs> which is which I, I enjoy uh, <laughs> I would do it so like that's but you know I, I said I, I have a preference against dreadnoughts but mm -hmm. if somebody ordered one I would absolutely do it yeah because um, you know you're gonna build another dreadnought at some point right exactly yeah. um, if somebody wants you know a um, you know an asymmetrical headstock or um, you know I can do things like that if they want something that's totally outside my wheelhouse a harp guitar I'm just gonna go Oof. <laughs> nope um, any Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah yeah any kind of like um, carve top stuff you mm -hmm. know like a you know um, f-hole mandolin f-style mandolin and stuff like that I just like I could do it but I don't know if I would do a good enough job for how much I would charge it for it yeah yeah because um, it's just it's not something that you already do and like learning the skill sets and everything and everything right. that would go along with that would be quite yeah. a lot so. and so that that's kind of the you know yeah, sure, I'll do it. Um, so earlier I said, um, you know, that you can, I, I, you can only change one thing about mm -hmm. a shape, right? And I really internalized that, that whole mindset. Um, but with electric guitars, it's even worse. Not worse. It's even <laughs> more pronounced because the, the people really want the body styles that they've seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have a, a, um, a double cutaway, you know, kind of custom body style that I really like that's, that's my own thing. Um, and, and I think other people tend to like it too, but I, I don't tend to stray much from that. So like if somebody calls and says, hey, I want a custom Les Paul. Like, Great, you can have a custom Les Paul. I'm <laughs> gonna make it lighter for you. You know, I'm gonna, you know, we'll do the things to make it more a Sylvan guitar's guitar than a Gibson guitar. Right. Um, but you know, the, at, at some point I would, you know, if somebody called and asked for an SG, you know, like, I don't like, I think it's tough to make SGs are really touch and go. Some of them are really nice and some of them are total duds. So I think like having some, you know, like that would worry me. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't want to, 
I don't want to build you a bad guitar. I want yeah. to build something that I have confidence in, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's my very long-winded version. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, uh, not, to self, not to sound too self-degrading, but, you know, if you want to pay the money for it, I'll pretty much do it. <laughs> and that's the tagline. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, yeah, you, you, you're open-minded and you're, you're open to trying right. different things. Yeah, but, yeah you still yeah. want to do something that's going to be to your strengths and that you're going to feel really good about. Right. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. Well, so what's what have you, what have you got for twenty twenty three projects goals? Sure, what's on, what's sure. On the plate for you. So I'm building um, I'm building two spec models right now that I'm really excited about. Well, three, um, and so you know, more custom guitars. Um, those two guitars are um, uh, redwood tops, and um, one is bird's eye maple back and sides, and one is curly maple back and sides. And I kind of actually built them as a pair. Mm -hmm. One's a little jumbo model, and one's a double O. Um, but one has got blue accents and one has green accents, cool. um, and so I thought that you know I just I thought they would look good together on the Carter Vintage Exchange site. <laughs> um, so I, I was kind of building those together for that. Um, I'm really excited for those. I've got another um, guitar, you know, that I'm, I'm a spec model that I'm working on. I've got a, a Zircoti custom model that I'm working on that I uh, am, am stressed about but excited for. I think it's <laughs> going to be really cool. Um, so more customs, you know, I, mm -hmm. if I could not, if I could build so many customs that I don't have time to do repair work anymore, that would be aces in my book. <laughs> um, so I really, uh, you know, the more, the more I can sell, the better, um, you know, working with more customers, building more, you know, just as, as other things sell, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's really, um, I'd like to go to some, you know, boutique guitar showcases and mm -hmm. meet some of the builders that I respect and, see some of their guitars in person and actually get my hands on them and stuff. I feel like I am um, pretty siloed in my, in my, you know, well, it's not, it's not that little, but in my shop in, uh, yeah. well, it's not that little, but in my shop in, uh, in, in Columbus, and I don't really get a chance to talk to you mm -hmm. know, other builders and stuff like that. So getting out and, you know, interacting with them more on social media and stuff like that, I'd like to do some more of that. And um, yeah, just more guitars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, Frank, you've done such a great job with everything that you put on our site. Your your social media is awesome. You get you have you. great folks playing your guitars, awesome videos. You've got your concert series. You've got more concerts coming up this year. And and yeah, so folks can follow, follow you on YouTube. Um, obviously, they can buy your guitars on Carter Vintage Exchange. They yep. can order from you directly. And I do believe all of these guitars are available on Carter are. Vintage Exchange. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah. Um, follow you on Instagram. We'll put all those links in the show notes. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Here. I, uh, I have been a, a follower of the North American guitar <laughs> since it was not even in North America. Um, so I, it's, a, it's a real honor to, to be here and to be included in with all these great instruments. And, uh, and yeah, I'm just I'm so glad to be here and, and you know, be uh, among my, I, 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 uh, it feels very... Uh, it feels very weird for me to say my peers with all these other other great guitars, but it's it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.